and welcome back to This Week in Politics. I'm Elena Jonathan. And I'm Lexi Cutmore. Last week we covered the beginnings of the impeachment hearing. What impeachment means, what the president's been saying, what you need to know. We're going to continue this conversation this week. Right. So we'll start off with what we know as of right now. Um, on September 24th, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi announced that the House would launch an impeachment inquiry on President Donald Trump and his dealings with Ukraine. Um, Pelosi launched the inquiry because of a whistleblower. As of right now, the identification of the whistleblower has not been given out. They are still under protection. But we do know that there was sort of a quid pro quo questionable dealing on the part of President Trump and President Zelensky. Um, on November 13th, State Department official George Kent and top U.S. diplomat Bill Taylor testified in public hearings of the impeachment inquiry. Now, the information they gave was pretty congruent with what they had been saying in the past, but they did say that there was some questionable communication practices. So they definitely opened up doors for people who testified this week to say a little bit more on the topic. And Elena, if you want to start off talking about Marie Ivanovich and her testimony that happened this week. Yeah, absolutely. So just to get some background knowledge, Yovanovitch was outed as the U.S.-Ukraine ambassador in May. And she was saying there was a form of witness intimidation that went along with that because of questionable business practices done by the Trump campaign. And I think what I want to kind of focus on with her is her credentials mm -hmm. because she was she earned her bachelor's in Russian studies mm -hmm. she then went on to Pushkin Institute in Moscow for her uh, master's degree for national defense um, at the university's National War College she served as the foreign services um, director made efforts to fight corruption in Ukraine and basically was the know-all for Russian information. Right. Her credentials, she would know the most about Russian affairs and along with Ukraine because of her studies and how much she studied. Right. So I think that's just something I want to focus on because to have a woman of this education background and have this much knowledge on a certain country, it is kind of odd to oust someone of that degree. Right. So that's just something I wanted to focus on. Um, what we learned from her testimony is that Russia was benefiting from this deal that was being made, the quid pro quo, as we've been calling it. She wanted to more focus on Rudy Giuliani's role. However, she felt as though, quote, I do not understand Mr. Giuliani's motives for attacking me, nor can I offer an opinion on whether he believed the allegations he spread about me. What I can say is that Mr. Giuliani should have known those claims were suspect coming as they reportedly did from individuals with questionable motives with reason to believe that their political and financial ambitions would be stymied by our anti-corruption policy in Ukraine. So she felt as though Rudy Giuliani was pushing her into right. a direction where she felt uncomfortable. And this isn't, you know, a motive on Rudy Giuliani's part that we haven't heard before. This is all information that has come out in the past. And I would like to say we did touch on Rudy Giuliani in the past episode. If you didn't watch that, I highly recommend that you do. But as far as his dealings in it, it seems pretty consistent with those who have testified on saying he played a big part in what's happening. Absolutely. Honestly, a very crucial part because he almost was Trump's scapegoat, I want to say, right. into getting these deals into motion. So let's we're probably wondering, viewers are probably wondering, you know, what is Trump saying about this? What has been said? is does he care does he not care so um we have i pulled a tweet and it says everywhere marie yagovanovich went turned bad she started off in somalia how did that go then fast forward to ukraine where the new ukrainian president spoke unfavorably about her in my second phone call with him it is a u.s president's absolute right to appoint ambassadors they call it serving the pleasure of the president 
the U.S. has now a very strong and powerful foreign policy, much different than preceding, in, preceding administrations. It is called simply America First. With all of that, however, I have done far more for Ukraine. So I just brought this tweet up because he is basically attacking um, her for how she handles business in Ukraine, but she knows how the Russians work because she has this much background knowledge in that culture and in that government right. system. So I just found it interesting that someone of her standard and of her credibility, I think is the biggest thing that we're focusing right. on because in any job, you need to be credible mm -hmm. in order to get hired or to even have a chance to get hired. So she was obviously hired for the right reasons and she knows what she's doing. I mean, prior to this, President Trump hadn't really spoken out about it at all. It wasn't until we started to see more people come out that were a bit closer to him, who had bigger ties with him. Until then, he didn't really have much to say on the impeachment hearings at all. He even went as far as to say that he's not even watching them, and he had other people close to his cabinet say that he was busy working on these days, that he wasn't even concerned with the impeachment because it's a witch hunt and it's nothing that he should be concerned with. But I think as we are seeing, as each testimony and each witness comes forward, he is being more and more vocal each right. time. Exactly. So that's just something to keep in mind. So that was last week she testified. So we can fast forward to November 15th. They called it the marathon testimony day. Yes. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so the marathon testimony day was 12 hours long, which is, I believe, the longest day out of any of the impeachment yeah. hearings. Um, the Colonel Alexander Vinman, he was the top Ukraine expert on the National Security Council and Jennifer Williams, special advisor on Europe and Russia to Vice President Mike Pence, who hasn't really spoken out about this, I want to add. No. You haven't really heard much from Pence. So I wonder, just to briefly, when he'll come into the picture? When will we start hearing from Vice President Mike Pence? Right. It's just so bizarre that a vice president, I think... I could speak for most people when they say Mike Pence hasn't really talked at all this presidency. No, I mean, if you, we tried looking into various news sources, seeing, you know, what is Pence saying on all of this? And it's, it's kind of non-existent. It's like, which is a little unusual. I mean, you look into past presidencies and other vice presidents had always been very vocal. You know, Biden was very involved during the Obama presidency. So I just wonder at what point will Pence start to become more involved. But that aside, both um, Vinman and Williams had listened in on to the in the call on July 25th between President Donald Trump and President Zelensky. And they said that that call gave them a cause for concern, which again, this is something that we've heard over and over and over again. There is something questionable happening. Um, but Vinman faced repeated personal attacks by Republicans to the committee, so it, it comes into question, when will people be given the chance, or if they want to, will they end up saying what happened in the call? I mean, we, we were, the call was released, which is not something that most people anticipated, but there were certain aspects of it that were redacted, so what is not being said at this point? Exactly, in my, you know, watching these play out and, seeing testimony after testimony, the one common factor that we keep seeing is that there was questionable practices and questionable things said on the Trump side that has put up red flags for multiple people on that phone call. So I think if you're on the fence about this and you are not sure if there's enough evidence for an impeachment or you are just not sure where you fall on this line. I think the one thing I want to emphasize is that every person that has testified has argued that there has been some sort of questionable practice done and that is cause for concern. And to varying degrees. Um, the testimony that happened today on the 21st, which we'll get into later, is definitely the most um, 
intriguing testimony that we've heard so far. It's the most outspoken. But, um, you know, what we heard back on the 15th from Kurt Volker, um, who resigned his name after appearing in the whistleblower complaint, made significant revisions to his testimony. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? So, in, in the beginning, he... I don't think he was as open to believe that there was right. causable suspicion. Right. But as the testimonies and days went on, I think he saw the light and what actually occurred in that phone call rather than what was cut and dry seemed fine. Right. Um. I personally would just want to go back and talk about Vidman. Mm -hmm. I'm just all for, you know, the background of it right. and why people are attacking Yovanovitch uh, Yav and now Vidman. Vidman isn't originally from the U United States. Right. He was born I'm, when it was the USSR mm -hmm. and f his family fled and came to America for, for a better life, which we've heard time and time again. But what's a little unusual about this is that the Republicans are actually attacking Vidmin right. because he was born in Russia. Exactly. They are trying to, to twist the narrative to almost say that it's because he was born in Russia that we should be suspicious of this mm -hmm. person. And it was interesting because during his testimony, Vidmin almost had to justify his citizenship in the U.S., which was Bizarre. really, really interesting. Yeah. Uh, another interesting take I found out of this was that there was a claim of the secret electronic filing system that the White House apparently had to lock down different transcripts of the call. And I've heard about this secret filing, mm -hmm. but to actually hear someone testify that they believe that there's a secret server in the White House right. that will take calls, in particular to this Ukraine call, and stuff it away as like almost a sweep under the rug type deal. Right. So now that that's coming to light, that could even open up a whole can of worms whether or not this exists. And if it does, then what else is in there? Exactly. It's just really unusual. And even both Volker and Vindman called the call improper and unusual. So this should raise some red flags. If you're sitting on the fence, definitely should raise some red flags. So now we can go into the 20th of November. Um, Gordon Sondland, the U.S. ambassador to the European Union, a key figure in Trump's dealings with the Ukraine, shared some information. Do you want to go over that? Right. Um, so he was a key figure in Trump's dealing with Ukraine. Um, and the, the information that he provided included that the president ordered that he... Um, and Kurt Volker, then the U.S. Special Envoy to Ukraine, and Energy Secretary Rick Perry work with Rudy Giuliani on the Ukraine policy, which, again, Rudy Giuliani is President Trump's private lawyer. And that's, I think, you... I know growing up, we've heard the name Rudy Giuliani. Yeah, America's mayor. Right. Everybody knows Rudy Giuliani's America's mayor. So I think it can get a little confusing. At least it was confusing for me. And initially when I started hearing Rudy Giuliani, I was thinking, you know, what does this man have to do? He has nothing to do with the government. He has nothing to do with how things are working within the government. He is purely, like Lexi said, Trump's personal lawyer. So. I think we should expect him to testify right. because of him just being a personal lawyer and apparently having a lot of things to do with this exactly. whole thing. Um, so Fiona, oops, not Fiona Hill, um, George, Gordon Sondland, he insists that what they were doing on that phone call and in, in times after that phone call and times before that phone call, all they were doing is following the president's orders. Right which can get dicey because you look back into history and most regimes have soldiers just following orders and that right. didn't work out. Well, I mean, if we go back to, say, the Watergate scandal, the people who were caught in the Watergate hotel were following Nixon's orders. And I'm not, I just want to make it clear, I am not saying that President Trump is equivalent to Nixon. It's just this comparison has come up quite often. Absolutely. Another th um, piece that Sondland took out of it that there was a clear pr quid pro quo. Right. So now after 
a week of testimony. We're on the 20th of November. What is clear right now is that there was a quid pro quo and there was unusual and improper business practices done in terms of the conversation on the phone call with President Trump and the Ukraine president. Um, Sondland in this testimony brought up concerns about the use of military to Mike Pence, like we mentioned, and Mike Pence said that he would bring it up with the president. Right. But then a conversation was never had, and that was it. Right, exactly. So it's just really crazy. It just seems like everyone kind of had a feeling about what was going on, but it wasn't until the whistle whistleblower blew the whistle that we are seeing what we are now. Right. So fast forward to today, the 21st of November, Fiona Hill was testifying. Right. She was the former top Russian advisor to the Trump White House. So do you want to just get into right. hers today? Um, I just, before getting into Fiona Hill, which again, as the days go on, we get to people who are closer and closer to Donald Trump. Um, and it seems like this morning was a little bit different. We hadn't heard from President Trump, like we said, very much about what's been happening with the impeachment hearing. But this morning, President Trump, Trump kind of snapped, calling the Democrats human scum. And again, these are two key witnesses before the White House Intelligence Committee. So Fiona Hill, again, former top Russia advisor to Trump White House, um, opened her testimony with criticisms about the uh, Republicans' attempt to instill doubt into people that Russia hadn't interfered in the 2016 U.S. presidential election, which it's been focused very much on the phone call. This is the first time I feel that we're really sort of hearing about this, despite all the time that has passed. I think it's important to note that there is suspected Russian involvement in the 2016 election because it was one of those things that I think at the time you were hearing, but it wasn't, you know, proven mm -hmm. and we didn't know. It was kind of a conspiracy theory. So right. the fact that Fiona Hill is coming and she's testifying that the Republicans are trying to instill doubt is interesting. Right. This is the first time that someone has openly testified under oath saying, yeah, I think there was something suspicious happening. Right. Um, but moving beyond that, Hill stated that everything that's been said that has denied that this whistleblower's complaint was, f was saying that it was false, she said that this is a fictional narrative that has been perpetrated and propagated by the Russian security services. So this just gets even more interesting because we aren't just talking about the United States anymore. We're not just talking about was this weird phone call or was this not a weird phone call. Right now we're talking about a major world power, Russia, right. and basically Russia's little brother, Ukraine, and their attempts to meddle, meddle in U.S. politics, in right. US politics which is a s shocking and should scare everybody just a little bit. Um, Hill's testimony went on to set the stage for important developments in the impeachment hearing as the time goes on. Um, some takeaways? Um, just a former top White House advisor openly saying that Trump and his administration have not been able to admit that there was something wrong in the 2016 election is something we have not seen before. Right. I mean, in her testimony, it was outwardly supportive, which, yes, the other people who had testified prior did say there was some suspicious communication happening, but they weren't as forthright in saying, yes, something is wrong. And I think I want to just point out that the people that testified before Bill Ta or William Taylor went on to say that he hadn't even spoken to President Trump. Right. So we're we're start we started at people who may not have even said a couple words to D Donald Trump, and now we're getting as close as Fiona Hill, who would have direct contact with Trump. Right. And it's coming more and more to light that this 
is weird and something's right. wrong. So as the days go on, just know that the people are getting closer and closer to Trump. And as they're getting closer, Trump has become more and more and more vocal about his overall distaste for right. this impeachment hearing. And um, Fiona Hill was one of the first to outwardly say this again. Quote, uh, and she said, quote, if the president or anyone else impedes or subverts the national security of the United States in order to further domestic, political, or personal interests, that is more than worthy of your attention. She's saying, she's addressing the people who are watching these testimonies, saying, hey, just know, no matter what side you're on, it's important to be involved in what's happening right now. I mean, this is history. We mentioned it last week. This, regardless of your political affiliation, regardless of what you believe to be true, you should just be watching this right. play out. Just bottom line. Um, the next person to testify today was David Holmes. Um, again, another official in the U.S. Embassy over in Ukraine. He overheard the call on July 25th between 20 or July 26th, excuse me, between Sondland and President Trump. Holmes stated that it became clear that Trump was pressuring the country's new leader to investigate democratic rivals. Which is, you know, what we've been hearing. So it's not too unusual, but definitely a red flag. Like I've been saying, all of these testimonies have been red flag after red flag to just make you question what is President Trump's intentions right. with this whole deal. Um, and Holmes further provided details about the phone call he witnessed in Kiev to which U.S. diplomat Gordon Sondland and Trump discovered the efforts to get Ukraine to commit to the investigations that President Trump wanted for his own personal benefit. Right. That is what they are giving in their testimony. They're not saying that you know this is coming from the whole Trump administration. They're saying this is in Trump's own personal interest. Which, when you have a U.S. president allegedly trying to use you know our tax dollars to investigate uh, a rival, a Democratic, Republican doesn't matter, a rival. That should anger you. Anybody that works and pays taxes should be angry because the money that we make should be used to protect us, not investigate rivals. Right. And again, no matter what side of the political spectrum you're on, it's important to remember that this is supposed to be a fair and just system. So regardless, doing things in the president's own personal interest is unconstitutional. Absolutely. I mean, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. um, I, like other witnesses have testified, it's just increasing concerns about what actually was said on the phone call, what was meant. It basically just solidifies what right. we've been saying. And Holmes went on to say that Sondland told tr um, him that Trump said he didn't care about Ukraine, the, the safety, the um, stability of Ukraine as a nation. Rather, he was concerned only about the investigations that he was seeking. Um, and this led Holmes to further describe increasing concern in the American emb embassy in Ukraine as it became clear that Trump was pressuring the country's new leader to investigate Democratic rivals. Um, and as this has gone on, again, Trump becoming more and more vocal during this hearing. Again, something we have not seen from the president. President Trump tweeted, quote, I have been watching people make phone calls my entire life. My hearing is and has been great. Never have I been watching a person make a call which was not on speakerphone and been able to hear or understand a conversation. I've even tried, but no avail. Try it live. So, I mean, you know, this tweet is basically saying what Holmes is saying isn't true. 
how can you hear a phone call when I have my phone pressed up against my ear and you're not even in the room or you are in the room and how can you hear this phone call? So he's basically trying to discredit Holmes for his testimony and we saw it in Yovanovitch, he tried to discredit her for her credentials and I think that's just an important theme that I want to just stress is that President Trump is making every effort to discredit the ones that are testifying. Right. And it does ultimately come down to who was there. We don't know the full truth of what happened on July 25th, but it seems like the testimonies so far have been pretty consistent. Yeah, it'd be one thing if we had witnesses and it was one said one thing, one said another, one claimed it wasn't weird, one claimed it did, but we're not getting that. We're getting one consistent quid pro quo, one consistent there was an attempt at bribery. Right. So um, a lot has happened in right. the last week. A lot of people have testified. It can get confusing, especially if you're not keeping up, but that's what we're here for. So let's just um, end this by Who's expected to testify? It's a little up in the air right now. Um, a lot of people are saying no. A lot of important people who are closer to Trump than Hill. Obviously, Fiona Hill has been out for a while. A while, yeah. Um, right now, all eyes are on John Bolton. Will he testify? I don't know. But people are questioning whether or not you know, he'll be there for the hearing. Hill's testimony reinforces Bolton's significance as a witness. He was advising her to register her concerns, and he was among the most about of what they were calling a metaphorical drug deal. He was a huge advocate for the um, continuance and even start of the impeachment hearings. And he has consistently, according to Hill's testimony, been suspicious of what's been happening in Ukraine. So I would think at some point, if they could get him to agree to testify, that we would end up hearing from John Bolton. Right. Uh, I know a lot of Republicans are asking for the whistleblower. We still, at this time, don't know who the whistleblower is. Um, he or she, we aren't sure, but Republicans are pretty much in an outcry for this whistleblower because they feel as though it's unfair that we don't know or don't have a face to the whistleblower, but that's the whole point of whistleblowing. Right, exactly. And if you have been watching the hearings, you know this, if you haven't, um, consistently it seems like one question that comes up is not necessarily directly asking for it, but an attempt to oust the whistleblower. and. I mean, I just, I wonder at some point, will this person come forward or will we end up repeating the past um, with Mark Felt, you know, during the Nixon administration where he didn't come forward for over 30 years later? You know, what what is the situation with President Trump if, if it comes as far as Nixon? If it doesn't, what then? I think, you know, hypothetically speaking, we probably won't hear from this whistleblower. There's been talk of witness intimidation from witnesses that are testifying right now that aren't the whistleblower, or we don't know are the whistleblower, but, you know, I think right now it's too fresh, and I think people are scared right, right now. So I don't think we're going to hear from the whistleblower, but... It could change tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah. But thank you for joining us for This Week in Politics. Be sure to keep up with our postings for the next week's episode and updates on the impeachment inquiry. I'm Elena Jonathan. And I'm Lexi Cutmore. We'll see you next time.